Hi, this is Lee Smallwood. I've done some work for the Angel News Network, and I have with me one of the founders of the Angel News Network, author Joel Anastasi. And today we're going to talk about two books uh, published in 2019 and 2020. The first book is The Refounding of America, and then its companion book, which is newly published, is Divine Dialogues with St. Germain. Hello, Joel. Hello, Woody. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see um, you. Yeah, uh, so let's talk about these books. Uh, the Refounding of America was published in 2019, and Divine Dialogues recently published in 2020. Could you uh, briefly summarize each book and why your group took on the project of writing these two books? Why we took on the project of writing these two books? Yes. Uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Actually, um, we were kind of chosen to do this. Um, I had been reading, uh, perhaps some of the people listening to this are familiar with the I Am the Discourses, which are published by the uh, St. Germain Press. And they're, they're really wonderful, they are, communications between St. Germain and um, the author who was Godfrey Ray King back in the 1930s. And they were a wonderful series. How many pages are in here? There's 300 pages plus of um, messages from St. Germain with all kinds of wonderful wisdoms. And they end in, the last one is January 1st, 1935. Well, I was born October 2nd, 1935, just about exactly nine months later. So um, I was kind of at night sort of going into prayer, saying to St. Germain, let me bring these up to date. Now, as you know, and maybe some people listen to this know, I've already written books with Divine Realm uh, representatives. My first book was with Gabriel, and then I did a book with Archangel Michael, and then I did a book with uh, Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene. So I was saying to St. Germain in prayer, let me bring these teachings up to date. So uh, in October of 2016, which is now a little over four years ago, uh, we were having a little birthday party in my apartment and all of a sudden Philip Collins, who is a channel for St. Germain, said St. Germain wants to deliver a message. And the message was that if we chose, uh, we would begin doing a project together in January of 2017. So that's how that got going. And uh, so St. Germain chose us and we chose to do the project. Wow, so the directive or it was your idea, but then you just got it confirmed from the higher realms. Right, exactly. So um, we thought we would begin uh, the, in early January, but St. Germain let it be known to Philip that he wanted to discuss some uh, of the teachings uh, in, uh, in, in some teachings he had Philip published ahead of time, about 100 pages of them, which Philip completed in like the November of 2016 before we even began the project. And we, we have been doing a series of sessions called Divine Discussions, which is like a, a, a monthly group uh, where uh, Philip would channel a divine entity and a group of us would be in class and then we would have a chance to interact with them. So uh, St. Germain said he wanted to cover some teachings that were in this book that he had given Philip. And so instead of beginning in January of 2015, we began December 15, 2016. And the first, um, the, the, the first discussion begins there in the Divine Discussions book. So the, had the channel been channeling St. Germain before this project began? Yeah, in an intermittent way, Philip can channel God, it's incredible. I mean, he seems to be able to have access to all kinds of divine realms. And um, so from time to time, he had channeled St. Germain, but not in a consistent way. Okay, so both of these books are channeled material, uh, both the refounding of America. Uh, in fact, the three authors are St. Germain, Joel Anastasi and Philip Belton Collins. And then the companion book is Divine Dialogues, same authors. 
So tell me about Divine Dialogues, your newest book, just published in 2020. It's a companion piece to the refounding of America. What does that mean that it's a companion piece? What does that mean? <clears throat> well, <laughs> when we started, when I started talking with St. Germain in January of 2017, I did not have a clue as to what this project was going to be about. Now remember, Philip uh, had already put together 100 pages of teachings from St. Germain that he put together in November, December of 2016. And this gets handed to me and it's a bunch of wisdom, 100 pages of great wisdom. And, but I had no idea what, we, what our book was gonna be like, this project. So uh, we began uh, talking in the, the second week of January, 2017, St. Germain and I, uh, Philip was channeling St. Germain. So the first conversations were for me to figure out what is this going to be a book about? And what St. Germain was very clear about, he just didn't want this to be some dreary, dull uh, teaching textbook. He wanted it to be a personal adventure story. And the challenge I had was, how do I take 100 pages of teachings and somehow make this into an adventure story? I, and and um, as I, so in the course of week, we would meet every Monday morning at 10.30. <laughs> And um, I'd have a conversation with St. Germain that would last for an hour to two hours. And really what the uh, Divine Dialogues is all about, it is a record of those conversations. The, 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 the book itself, um, um, The Refounding of America, is sort of like the story of my awakening to my, my divinity, my, me being a proxy for mankind, because our journey here is to awaken to our... To, to all of our divinities, each of us is an expression of God, and but we're not taught that as children. So it's the story of, it's the adventure story of the awakening to my divinity. The reason why I say an adventure story is because I started out at the very beginning when I was very young, and, um, and it was sort of like feeling that I didn't belong and I didn't fit in and the discovery of the fact that I'm as lovable and I'm as good as anyone else. So it's going from this fragmented, fractured kind of psyche into the wholeness of realizing that we're a divine expression of God. And this whole journey that takes you through my life, uh, what St. Germain wanted it to be was uh, a vehicle for teaching the wisdoms that he wanted us to teach, but in a context that was interesting and that people could relate to um, not only in terms of an adventure story, but also how they can see themselves mirrored in it. Well, I, in reading the book, I know that it's divided into three sections uh, oh. one's for the three different authors, and uh, which is, I guess is everyone's adventure story, as you put it. But at the end, there's a glossary, and the glossary is a large section at the end of the refounding of America. So what is the significance of the glossary? Well, let's expand it be beyond the glossary because the book, you're right, the book is in three sections. And the last um, section of the book, part three, how many pages does that say? 185 to um, 290. So it's about 105 pages of, of wisdom. And the glossary, there, there are um, seven discourses and then uh, a section on tyrants and then the glossary is about five to six hundred terms. The, the, the glossary is really a listing, they're, they're just short listings of terms that um, communicate wisdom and they're very easy to understand and they're palatable but really very important. I'm just going to read one of them to give people um, maybe more than one. I, I like to read, he's got several on America. First one he says is, America belongs to God. It is the anchor that fastens the God control of land. And then um, the second one says, America is blessed beyond any other nation on the planet. And due to her great blessing, she is destined to share a great light in the world. The ascended master priority work in America is important in healing the entire earth. Now that's all expanded on in the book itself, the, the, the refounding of America, because St. Germain says on the very first page of the, of the message from St. Germain, the purpose of this divine endeavor is to refocus the attention of mankind on the creation and the mission of the United States of America as a beacon of light for the entire world. 
So what the, the, the real mission of this book, The Refounding of America, is to um, teach humanity that America, that, that um, it was always the intention of the divine realms to bring we consciousness to the earth. Um, and that America was chosen to be the vehicle for that. That's why our democracy was created, a government of we the people. Remember before that, it, it was what? A bunch of kings and dictators and, 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 and very, various kinds of rulers who made all the decision power. But what um, America was intended to do was to give the power to the people to, because we're all individual expressions of God. And that is the mission of the United States to bring to the world we consciousness and ultimately to create communities of peace, love, equality, harmony, and balance. Now, of course, we're looking at the United States and we don't see that at all, do we? So um, this, this book began just about the inauguration of Donald Trump and what uh, St. Germain said was that it was going to be a vehicle to record the experience of America with Donald Trump because uh, America was not, the United States was not fulfilling its mission to be the light of the world. We needed to reawaken the citizens of America to realize what their mission and de destiny was. And Donald Trump was gonna be a vehicle, to, vehicle to, to do that. How? Well, most Americans didn't even vote. Less than half the population voted, less than half the population participated in our democracy. And Donald Trump was gonna threaten our democracy and it was going. he was gonna wake up Americans to participate and realize that we were going to lose our democracy if they didn't involve themselves and participate. So what happened um, in the election, we, in the presidential election we just had, we, we had the, the greatest number, uh, the greatest percentage of Americans who voted in over 100 years and the greatest number of Americans who have ever voted in any of our presidential elections. So the wake up has in fact happened between the 2016 and the 2020 election. You're, you're, well, you've led me into my next question. You may have already answered it, but I'm asking it anyway. Uh, the current events covered in the book, they're often political. And from a human standpoint, they seem to lean, uh, uh, from a human standpoint, St. Germain seems to lean liberal. Is St. Germain a Democrat? <laughs> Is St. Germain a, a Democrat? <laughs> To start with, you know, in, in our, our conversation, in the dialogues, um, St. Germain has often said that, what, what do these words mean, really liberal, conservative, all this kind of stuff, they sort of lost the, the, their meaning. But I will say this, um, America was designed to bring equality to, to the world. And um, what conservatism tends to do is preserve and conserve the power and the wealth where it already is. And what the liberals are doing is trying to expand that to include a larger, to include everybody. So it's about bringing equality. So I, I, I would say what um, the, the Democrats are doing is to reflect the mission of what the United States is supposed to do, which is to bring equality to, to the world because uh, we're, uh, what, what the Democrats are doing, not all the time, of course, but for, for frequently their programs are about expanding in, in, into a big tent. You know, it's, it's one cer certain sign of that is when uh, the Civil Rights Act was passed back in the 1960s. What did all, all the Southerners do? They went over to the Republican Party because they didn't believe in equality and didn't want equality. They wanted to, to preserve the, their privileges. So I wouldn't so much say that uh, St. Germain is a, a Democrat. I would turn that around. And, and say that the, the, the Democrats have embraced the, the concept of equality. Not perfectly, not fully, but in a larger sense than the Republican Party is, at least at this point in time. Right. Now, hopefully everybody in, in this awakening that's going on in consciousness, because although we're not gonna get into it now, we know, and, and anybody that's paying attention to what the, the Angel News Network is publishing and what our podcasts are stating is there are high vibration energies that are coming in big time into the earth plane to raise the consciousness of, of, of all the people of earth, especially of America. And when I say raise the con when when I say high vibration energies, we can correlate high vibration with higher consciousness. And higher consciousness means seeing everybody as one. Thank you. Um, I have one final question. And uh, it relates to, well, both books 
the uh, the refounding of America and divine dialogues. They are uh, they there are many questions about politics and, and current events, but there are also uh, topics that come up that are also very personal, uh, personal things that have happened in your life or the life or, or uh, the channel, Philip. Um, and I was just uh, wondering how these personal discussions are, are um, how they came up with St. Germain, um, aside from the political, the political topics. Um, so you also discuss some very personal issues with St. Germain. Why do you do that? Well, St. Germain wanted it to be a human document. He wanted it to be a discussion that people could relate to. He, he didn't want it to, to be a textbook. He wanted it to be a personal journey. And, um, and, and, uh, and being drawn into that personal journey was very healing for me, as anybody who reads the book will, will, will find out. Um, but that leads me into one other thought I wanted to, to share before we're finished with this, Woody, not to make it too long, but um, well, one of the reasons why we decided to publish the dialogues um, uh, after we, we, we published The Rebounding of America, because um, in the course of discuss, uh, in the, uh, a, a lot of things happened in the dialogues. Number one, we were just, uh, we were expanding on the teachings that Saint Germain wanted to include in the book, so we, we get a fuller examination of some of the teachings. But in the course of conversations, other things were happening as well. Um, when uh, Saint Germain was talking about the fact that uh, the, the, the founding fathers of America were inspired by Saint Germain and other ascended masters. So we talked about that and we developed that. Concurrent with these discussions, I was reading these big thick biographies of Alexander Hamilton and George Washington and John Adams and the uh, 1776 by David McCullough and some, some of these other things. And so uh, the more I, I, I um, went into the history, you know, we think of the Revolutionary War and we think of the Americans fighting against the British and all this kind of stuff. But it became so clear to me that to call George Washington's army an army was really an exaggeration. I mean, they, they, they had no organization. They came and went. They, 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 they had no communication systems. They uh, had... It was so hard to supply them, let alone feed them. Half the time, he didn't know who was where, and he didn't even know how many numbers he had because people were going back to their farms all the time. And to think that somehow we won that war against the strongest uh, army that perhaps had, had ever been put together in the history of humankind is extraordinary. And it really vividly brought to, to a clearer understanding how inspired by the higher realms um, all of the founding fathers and and also the soldiers themselves. For, for example, I was reading about the, um, the the crossing of the Delaware, and um, it was bitter cold out, and the the soldiers hadn't been fed well. They had they, they hadn't they weren't clothed well, and off, many of them didn't didn't have boots and shoes. They their feet were wrapped in rags, and they they walked for twenty miles along the, the Delaware to it. Jack Trenton, and there were bloody trails from their feet in the snow. I mean, it, it, it was just beyond imagination how they were able to muster that kind of force, that kind of will, and then attack and win in Trenton. And, I, and so I was discussing with St. Germain, how did that happen? And he talked about the inspiration from the higher realms as they would sleep. So, I mean, it, you, we get drawn into these conversations of so many fascinating stories and tales. So. That's why we felt we have to publish the companion piece because there was so much more additional information that uh, uh, was just fascinating. It gave us a, a much stronger and clearer understanding of what an incredible achievement it was to uh, create that young country called the United States of America. Wonderful. Well, Joel, thank you for your time today and a uh, fascinating interview. And for the audience, both the refounding of America and Divine Dialogues, Divine Dialogues with St. Germain, the companion to the refounding of America, they're both available for sale on amazon.com. So thank you for your time today, Joel. Any, any final words? Um, just that um, I hope people will 
be drawn to read this material because uh, it, it really helps us truly understand what a responsibility we as, as American citizens have in this country because the United States of America has an enormous mission to bring peace, love, equality, harmony, and balance to the world, but it has to happen here first. And that is our mission. And uh, this book communicates that mission, I hope, clearly, and I hope they're drawn to it. Thank you, Joel. Thank you.